Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's episode, I'm going to be taking an in-depth look at a Ruby library called Grover, which you could use to transform your HTML files into PDF documents. Grover is actually a wrapper for a JavaScript library called Puppeteer, which under the hood uses the Chromium headless web browser engine to do its HTML to PDF conversion. So the reason I'm looking at Grover today is because of a new business requirement for the e-voting application that I've been working on in the past several episodes. The original design of the application involved telling user responses to questions on a ballot. But in this new business requirement, we're going to have just an e-signature that the user needs to submit, and they're going to be responding to a lengthy document of legal text. And to turn that e-signature into something a little bit more tangible, we're going to be generating a PDF document of what they just signed and emailing it to the user. So I'm going to start out now by designing our models, views, and controllers to meet the new business requirements. So the initial business requirement was satisfied with ballot being the base table and a web of related data tables for storing all of the questions and user responses associated with the ballot. However, the proxy form is going to be different in that it doesn't require complex management of responses. What it's collecting is really simple, just an e-signature. But the data it presents is going to be more complex because it's going to be showing a wordy template with haphazardly placed fill-in data. The proxy form setup could use a very similar structure as ballot. It just doesn't need the related tables for storing user responses. And in a case like this, it might be appropriate to consider using the Rails polymorphic associations where we could consider a proxy form to be a kind of ballot, but I'm not exactly sure what future requirements might pop up. And I'm not sure if the benefits of treating proxy as a type of ballot will outweigh the problems of touching any existing data and modifying what we already have in the ballots table. In other words, a polymorphic association here, just to recycle the ballots table, might give us some scalability problems down the road. So in this case, I think we could consider a proxy form to be its own thing and build separate data tables along with a separate overhead proxy campaign data table. In the future, we might have to combine the proxy form and the ballot concept in some way, but right now we don't exactly know what that's going to look like, so let's not get ahead of ourselves and over-engineer this thing. I think creating a parallel path of data models and controllers for encapsulating the proxy form concept is going to be sufficient for now. So here I'm creating our data models. As you can see, I have the proxy campaign level at top. And from that, we're going to generate some proxy forms that are going to be filled up by the user and submitted. And then we're going to generate a PDF and retain the PDF file name here in this field. Next, I'm going to go ahead and build the controller and view for our form. For all the text on our proxy form, I'm going to go ahead and put that into the slim template for now and just write it as the HTML. Uh, I'm not going to worry about making a dynamic way of loading the template because that's a feature that we could do later. What I'm concerned about now for this stage of developing the application is just being able to display that form and all the text on the PDF, being able to collect the e-signature and generate the PDF file. Note that for the fill-in fields of the document, I want to use a font that makes it stylistically appear as if the value was typed in or written onto the form. So here in my slim template, I'm making use of a helper that I created called legal form fillable text. And here in legal form fillable text, it creates the appropriate tag and it references the legal form fillable text style sheet. These fonts are going to matter later when we try to dockerize this application and we're going to have some issues getting these fonts to work inside of the Docker container when we generate our PDF. And I'll show you how to get around that. By the way, I realize that for this part of the video, I'm glossing over a lot of details in the code and that's because I don't want to rehash too much of the things that I've built in some of the previous videos 
for this video, I want to focus on the PDF generation piece, which I'm going to get to next. But if you want to see the full code and have access to the GitHub repository so you can see the details of how I'm building this program in Ruby on Rails, then join my Patreon. And for the price of a cup of coffee a month, you'll have access to the source code for my web projects on this YouTube channel. The link for my Patreon subscription is down below in the video description. And while you're at it, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. So now that we have our foundation code set up, let's go ahead and populate some mock data. And then we'll go into our web browser and try to hit the endpoint so that we could see a rendering of a sample proxy. And we'll see how the fonts and everything show up. So here I have the form loaded up. And this is showing some sample data that I just created. As you can see, the fonts are showing up like I want them to with the, the type sort of font here on the lines. And uh, I have this electronically signed form field at the bottom because this proxy hasn't been signed and complete yet. So the user will type their name in here and electronically sign it. On the back end, it's going to record the appropriate details. And then this form should be complete with a signature at the bottom. And there you can see it has the handwritten looking type font. Here's a look at the controller. Uh, as you can see here with the edit, I have a proxy form object. And this is modeled after the ballot form object that I made in my last video. If you want to learn more about how to build complex form processors in Rails, go ahead and check out that previous video that I made. All right, now it's time to start building our PDF generator using the Grover Gem and Puppeteer. And the first thing I did was I created this data directory, which I'm going to use to keep all my files. We could use active storage here, but I'm just going to be using the regular file system to store these files and retrieve them. To handle the PDF generation, I'm going to build some interactor classes in this services folder right here. To learn more about the interactor design pattern, which I'm using here, you can watch my video that I made a few months ago detailing interactors. So this class here, it's going to take a proxy as its input, and it's going to render an HTML string using the controller and then it's going to pass that HTML into the Grover gem. And Grover config here are the settings that it's going to pass into Puppeteer. Recall that Grover is actually a wrapper around a JavaScript library called Puppeteer, which is a wrapper for the Chromium headless web browser. Here's the documentation page showing all of the options that you could pass into Puppeteer. All these options should be able to work with Grover because it passes everything through to the JavaScript library. All we really need for this application, though, is just to set the page size and to tell it where it could find JavaScript files. Here's the configuration documentation specifically for Grover. And as you can see, we scroll down here a little bit. It'll tell you how to set up your script tags so that Grover could find your JavaScript files locally. And we need the script tag because we're using Webpacker, which is going to take both of our JavaScript libraries that might be needed to render the page. In this case, we're not using any JavaScript. But our application style sheets are going to be compiled this way as well and included in the JavaScript. Recall in the Stonks on Rails series I did, we were doing an import statement for application that SCSS into the styles here which gets compiled into the JavaScript deliverable. So for example here, let's look for this legal form fillable text. We could find this class embedded in the JavaScript deliverable when we render that page. So here we're on our page. We have the uh, packs right here that contains all the JavaScript and CSS. If we load this manually into our web browser, we should be able to find our styles like legal form fillable text inside of this file. Yep, and there it goes. Here's all of our style sheet data inside of JavaScript, which is interesting. But that's just kind of how Webpacker works. So I'm going to make a couple more classes here to make it easier for us to save the output PDF file because this class is just going to return a byte stream that's going to be the PDF file and we want to be able to save it too. So this class here, you could call and pass in a proxy active record object into it. And it's going to build the file name 
it's going to pass the proxy into generate proxy PDF, which is going to make the bytes that go into the file, and then it's going to call save PDF to do the operation of saving it on a local file system. So this proxy's controller here inside of generate proxy PDF is going to be rendering off of the proxy's show template. So here are proxy's show. This is a template that's rendering off of the same one that we were using to look at it in the web page through web browser. And we're assigning the instance variable form here by building our own proxy form right there. So let's go ahead and give this a try and try to run that interactor. Okay, as we can see here, it rendered the layout and it can't find Grover because I forgot to add the Grover gem. So let's go ahead and add the Grover gem. Okay, so we add our gem. Now, another important step is that we have to add Puppeteer as a dependency in our JavaScript node modules. If we don't add Puppeteer, then we're going to get an error when we try to uh, do a rendering. Okay, let's give this a try again. And there it rendered our page. It looks like it updated the proxy. As you can see there, it recorded the PDF file name. Let's go take a look at that file name in the file system. So here we are in our data directory. Let's try to open this. And there we go. We have our rendered PDF. Now you're probably going to notice that the e-signature part is not rendering in the correct font. In the other page, I had it rendering in the handwritten looking font, but it's not rendering that way here because this font is missing from the system generating the PDF and it's using a fallback font. Now the typical way of fixing custom font rendering problems is by providing the font in your style sheets. But Puppeteer seems to have a lot of trouble rendering custom fonts when you're generating a PDF. Here's a long thread about that issue on GitHub. In this thread, people have tried numerous JavaScript and style sheet hacks with various degrees of success, but I found that the easiest way of fixing these font problems is to just install the font on the production server operating system. So here we are back at the command line, and the way that we could find which fonts are installed on our Debian system is by doing the fc list command. Okay, so this lists all of the fonts that we currently have. That particular font is in brush script MT, so let's try to search for that using grep. And as you can see, there's no font with that name that's listed on the system. We could easily install that font though just by copying the true type font file into the appropriate directory. So here in my project, I'm gonna create a top level folder called fonts. And I'm just going to copy the font files into that folder. All right, so I think we have the other fonts already installed. There's a Courier and there's a Times New Roman installed on my Langs Debian instance, but we don't have brush script. So let's go ahead and copy that into the fonts folder. So you want that file to go into user share fonts true type. We're just going to use the standard copy command. Okay, there now the font's installed. So let's try to generate our PDF again, and we'll see if we get a different result this time. And there we go. Now that the font's installed, we have the correct font showing up when we generate our PDF. Now keep in mind that in this case, when you're generating a PDF, it works a little bit differently than it is when you're viewing this through a web browser because when you're using a web browser client, you have to have the fonts installed on the client end. So you have your server out on the internet, the client will download the web page, and if they don't have that font installed locally on their system, the font won't display. And then that's where your CSS comes in. It will show you the end user's computer where to download that font over the internet. But in this case, it's okay to use a system font and the system font works because you're on the, the server itself when you're generating the file. Remember, this is done through a headless web browser session that's started up on the server itself. So if those fonts are already installed on the server, all the fonts need would be available to it. Okay, so there's one thing left to do and that's to get this thing running in Docker so that we could run it on our production system. And the first thing that we're going to do is modify our Docker file so that it will automatically install all of the dependencies needed for Puppeteer and Grover to run. Now here in the docs in the Puppeteer troubleshooting page, 
it gives you some information that you need for setting up on Docker. And we're running the Alpine version, so we're going to follow these steps right here. One thing to note is that this tutorial says that you have to go down to Puppeteer version 10.2. Right now, Puppeteer's at version 13. I'm going to try running version 13 with Chromium on Alpine anyway, and we'll see if it works. Maybe the only incompatibility is with some features that we may not be using, so there's a chance that could work. Let's go ahead and make these modifications to our Docker file. So here, this run APK is adding all the dependencies needed for Chromium to run. The tutorial tells us to set these environment variables. We're installing our fonts here onto the Docker container. And one interesting thing here is that the troubleshooting tutorial recommends that you create a Puppeteer user to run the application so that you don't have to pass the no sandbox command. Otherwise, Docker will try to run it as a root. But this could cause some problems on a production server because your process is going to be running as Puppeteer user and that will cause problems for your file links outside on the host system. You're going to need to set up Puppeteer user there as well. So what I'm going to do to get around this is I'm just going to actually use the no sandbox option. Here in the Grover docs, it shows you how to set up the Grover no sandbox setting here and all we have to do is set an environment variable so i'm going to set this in my env file so we're going to build the new docker file okay our container is built let's run it so now we're in the container console by the way i have my docker container set up to point to the same database so all the data should be the same we should be able to generate the exact same proxy pdf file by using this containers console as we were able to do on the main system All right, let's go check it out now. So we can see the new file popped up, and we'll take a look. And everything looks good. All the fonts are installed, and Grover is properly installed, along with Puppeteer. It's generating PDFs as expected. Well, I hope this was an informational video showing you how you could generate PDFs in Rails using one method. Another great way of doing it, which I've covered in previous videos, is through the gem called Prawn which uses its own DSL and its own set of commands to build a PDF file from scratch, and it doesn't need any third-party dependencies. We could have used Prawn here, but the problem is that we would have had to rebuild our entire form separately in Ruby code using the Prawn commands. Where What's nice about this is that you've got your templates already built because you want to display that form on a web page. So it makes sense to use Grover here because we could take that web page and just convert it to a PDF. So if you like this video, subscribe my channel for a lot more content like this. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next video.